an artist for about 15 or so years now. I originally trained as a scientist and then I had a career as a scientist, science administrator, and then I retrained first in textile art. I did a BA in textile art and then an MA in fine art print. So now I make work in several different media. And for this particular project, I'm making some textile panels, dyed textiles, dyed and printed textile panels. Because I did an MA in fine art print, um, I explored lots of different paper-based media with prints. Because before, I was doing textile-based print, so it was so basically I've trained as a printer, a printmaker, but using lots of different materials to print on. The reason I got to doing what I was going to do was because I wanted to actually talk about this interaction of um, knowledge and objects. Basically trade, that's interesting, to trade. Trade is a good thing, trade is, you know, um, um, and the obvious choice to think about trade is going to be the East India Company and how that was set up, how it worked, what it did where it went wrong actually because it turned into a really horrendous corporate body with private arms. This, this idea of knowledge and history and all this background actually relates very well to putting together in a in a format which is not just a one piece, it's a related set of pieces. So I really like narrative, I like to know the story, I want to know um, why something is how it is. And if you actually do that. Books are wonderful for that because then you can have lots of pages and each pages can actually take you a bit further. And so the format has always been really quite absorbing. And if you're going to make artist books, of course, you're actually looking to do things in a very visual way as well as in using words. And I use both. But I just like the idea of this continuity and that there's a narrative and that's why I've chosen to make books. I loved the piece about the Zone of Dreams because it is such a, it has such a sort of an overview, such a grand um, theme, and that was really the set of themes that I am interested in. And it has this, uh, going back to this idea of connectedness, it, it connects, you know, our city of Bradford with um, the wonderful countries in the in in the Asian areas, and it actually shows in a very clear way but this is a huge leap you know, from, from west to east it has all sorts of overlying um, uh, sort of subplots almost you know that this is an enormous way to go to actually um, find a trade route which is what it was to start with um, but the benefits have been again enormous and now of course it's it's almost come to fruition now that we have um, in Bradford um, an awful lot of people whose heritage comes from that part of the world mixing easily with with the people who are here. So now we have a, a multicultural community which is actually very successful, I think. And then, uh, this, um, this big painting um, is really speaking a little about that, and how it's all come about, and the history of why people move and why the British went out to the, to the East and what came of it. And not all of that history has been positive of course and a lot of it's been quite violent but it, it is a very interesting set of circumstances and that painting apart from being beautiful anyway as a painting has got such a lot of background and nar narrative or back to my mind. I think the thing that I like so much about that exhibition is the bringing together of, of these pieces from such different cultures um, and then not only seeing the difference but also seeing the similarity as well. Um, and seeing again that um, we in our culture are using artefacts that actually were generated by the Asian culture a long time ago, like my Dyer's Matter, for example, and it's not possible in the West to have a nice solid red colour without the dye stuff being imported from southern India, actually. And when I was working mostly with textiles, the colour was primary important. I love colour and the nuances and the subtleties of colour and the way it changes with the texture of the substrate, the texture of the fabric. I think textiles rely very heavily on the textual quality and colour is absolutely vital for that. And if you're looking at print, words, storytelling, um, then sometimes colour can be a distraction. It can be, so, well, 
maybe so beautiful that you don't actually see the story behind it, you're just distracted by the beautiful colour. So um, I think it can be both a majorly wonderful thing and also maybe a distraction as well. So I've tried to take that into account with what I'm doing.